Bobby, Bobby Clinton. He's looked great throughout all of Summer League. It's still crazy that he went so low um, in this draft. But I think he's going to be a diamond in the rough for this team, man. He he does so many things, and he's showing more and more. I want to say this first about Bobby. It was only a week ago that there were some fans that I saw who were saying that nepotism was involved when it came to him because his agent is Michael Tellum, right? That's Aaron Tellum's son. But honestly, I, I don't care. I could care less. Like, can he hoop? Can he hoop? He's been one of the best players in summer league. I think we can all agree on that. that he's got a, a bright future in the NBA. So whether it was nepotism or whether it was by chance, is he deserving or not? I think he's more than deserving and he's showing it on the court. Did anybody see that no-look dime he had tonight? He had a no-look pass that was beautiful. He's showing more and more of his game. I didn't know he had that in his bag as far as the vision. I knew that he was a great shooter. He's showing that he's a better defender than I thought too, but even his ball handling, he's showing a lot of things to his game. I think he's just kind of getting a feel for what his role is going to be here in summer league. And then he's just kind of getting in where he fits in, seeing where the weaknesses are that he can kind of plug and play offensively with the ball. And I think tonight we saw a lot of that. We saw a lot more of him pushing the ball in transition and just looking to get more guys involved, which was something we hadn't quite seen from Bobby up to this point. I, I hadn't seen it. He may not be, he's not going to be a star, I don't think, but he's going to be a very solid player because he, he knows the game. He plays the game. He makes the right pass. The ball doesn't stick with him. He doesn't turn the ball over. He doesn't try to do too much outside of his scope. He looks really, really comfortable. And that's, that's great to see from a rookie coming in so early. I'm really impressed with his ability to be effective without needing the ball. You know what I mean? Like in summer league, a lot of guys are looking at this as an audition to earn a contract, right? And so that can make it hard for guys who don't dominate the ball. You know, a guy like Bobby, it's hard to be effective if your guards aren't looking for you. You know, we've seen that. At, I think last game, he had a few times he was open for alley-oops or easy buckets and he kind of got looked off. So it could be hard for a guy who doesn't dominate the basketball in summer league, especially if the guys are playing with like your point guard or your shooting guard are selfishly trying to make a name for themselves. It's encouraging to see him still finding ways to be effective though. He came into tonight's game averaging, I think it was 15 points and seven boards and four assists, I think on 52%, but 46% from three. It's summer league, right? I get it, it's just summer league, but I'm looking at his efficiency. I think tonight he only had about five points on six shots or something like that. So even though he didn't score a lot of points, he didn't force anything, right? When I see when I see that he has the game like he had last game, where he's got you know quite a few points, and then tonight where he's only got five points on six or seven shots, that's telling me he's not forcing anything. He's just taking what the defense is giving him night to night, right? Last game he probably had a lot more opportunities, and then tonight the scouting report was probably that he's one of the guys. So I think he may have just been taking what was there. So just his ability to be able to process that and be able to find other ways to be effective is another reason that I like his game. He's going to be real nice. I can't wait until training camp. That's like, the, I've seen enough from Summer League to now look forward to training camp. I want to see who's going to come out on top of the positional battles, what the rotation is going to look like early on. My fear with Clintman is how NBA ready he is. He's a good defender, but when he's going up against bigger forwards, that'll be the true test for me. Yeah, I don't think that's really anything to be fearful of, though, Game Notch. I think it's just something that we need to expect. Because you're right, this is Summer League. How many MVPs of Summer League went on to be MVPs in the league? You know what I mean? So you got to take it with a grain of salt. But also just look at things that are go outside of just, you know, scoring the basketball. Like I, I know it's, it's a cliche, but outside of stat sheet, you know, look at how they play the game. Look at their decision making. Look at their fluidity. Look at their processing speed, right? Defensively, what are they doing? Are they making the right reads? Are they helping the helper? Things like that. That's what I'm looking for during summer league. And he's been doing a lot of those things. You know what I mean? He knows how to play the game already. And so I think that's any player though coming into the league. They all got to get bigger. They all got to get stronger. They're all going to get bullied a little bit early on at some point, you know, in, the, in that rookie season. Um, but I, I think, you know, he'll, he'll get in the weight room. You know, he'll get stronger. He'll get tougher. He'll understand positioning against bigger guys. He'll understand the tricks in the trade, things like that. By the time he's 22, 23, 24, he's going to be a really, really good player for this team. Hopefully for this team. We'll work well with the vets. Yeah, man, y'all see it. Everybody sees it. Everybody sees it, man. He, he is a much better passer than I think a lot of us thought, myself included. In the beginning, like game one, like when he's trying to put the ball in the floor, I cringe. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're a standstill shooter. Just do that. But as the game continued to pass, I'm, I'm getting more and more comfortable with him, the ball in his hands. Like, okay, yeah, push it. Push it. Okay. He's, he's really showing more and more what he's able to do game to game. 
two to three years during the Clinton going to be the ooh. I like that a lot. Imagine that inside outside game because now you will let JD continue to just man the paint, be a great defender, help side defender, and post defender. Just be a great all around defender in that paint. Just dominate that paint. And then offensively, just eat off of what's available. Like, I don't think Jalen Duran is going to have plays drawn up for him. He's not going to need to because he's going to be such a force in the paint, getting offensive rebounds because he's so strong and catching lobs. And like, he's going to be able to eat without trying. A lot of time just because of i think the spacing we'll have and the facilitating we'll have with Cade and Jaden ivy he's gonna be just fine so having him just man that paint and and focus on that is going to be more than i think enough for him and allowing equipment to come in and be able to play the other side you truly have an inside outside game now which i think oh he made it <laughs> he made it man i i thought it was gonna be me all night what's good my dog hey what's going on man Sorry, I'm late, everybody. Clintman and, and Jenkins have been the most impressive. What you said was what I was kind of hitting on earlier. What I like about him is his ability to be able to process what the defense is doing game to game. It seemed like the first two games, you know, it wasn't really known as far as who he was or what he can do. Now it seems like the scouting report is kind of changing. So he's probably like, OK, you know, they kind of hit to how I play. So he didn't force it. He didn't for, he, yeah. he didn't continue to try to look for his shot. He did other things. He got other guys. He was having no look passes, baseline. Like he was finding other ways to be effective, pushing the basketball. So that shows me he understands how to adjust. Yeah, man. Like I say, it's starting with last game versus Houston. Um, it, in the first half, they tried that. You know what I'm saying? He was right. You're right away. You know, they was, hey, we realize that this guy, if you watch a film, you realize that this guy keep getting open. You know what I'm saying? They're not yeah. giving him the ball all the time. But he's open right. a lot, too much. Um, last game, they tried that. By the time we got to the third quarter, it was like, okay, you found a break in the defense. You know what I'm saying? Now, Clintman, you know, found that spot where he could be effective. And mm -hmm. at that time, it was shooting. You know, so yep. like I said, it's night, not necessarily in a box score, but uh, just, just the things that he does on the court. Um, he has some really good IQ for a young person, man. And mm -hmm. like I said, you know, he played you know, with pros, <laughs> you play with pros over there. Exactly. So, man, I'm really, really intrigued watching him uh, play basketball. Really quickly, uh, I wanted to go back to this. I, I, I commented on this right before you hopped on, but I had to bring it back, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Two to three years, Darren and Clintman going to be the front court in the league. What are your thoughts on this? So, when you look at the timeline, absolutely, it's a possibility. I mean, you look at. Uh, where we just signed Tobias, right? No, even though we don't want him to, we know he's probably going to end up playing for it. <laughs> he's going to play for it. Um, yep. When you look at the timeline, I mean, two-year deal for Tobias, right? But at the same time, if Clintman, it's all in his hands. It's all in his hands. His development, how fast he can catch on to things, how far he can go, it's all up to Clinton. You know, mm -hmm. that at this point, Duran is going to be Duran. Uh, but it's all up to Clintman. We have to see him out there. You know, we got to you know, see some preseason action against, you know, some guys that are actually going to play. We have to see how he does in that environment. If he can continue exactly. to just be a guy to contribute, get open, cut through lanes, knock down a three here and there, he can find himself on the basketball court really fast. And I know it's just summer league, but it's a young team, man. A lot of roles are going to be defined. Nothing is going to be given. We heard what JB said already. He said, guys got to earn their roles. I won't be surprised. I'm not saying anybody's going to start, but I won't be surprised if you see Clintman getting minutes, maybe month, month or two into the season. I, I can see that. Like Clintman can easily be a starter in two years. He can do everything on time. Yeah, like when we talk about Isaiah Stewart being that stretch four, Clintman could be that. He could be that and more. I think he could, he can offer even more offensively. He's not he's not Stu defensively. But he probably won't ever be Stu defensively as far as physicality. But offensively, he like he's he fits more of the Lori marketing type of player than the Isaiah Stewart type of player. You know what I mean? Somebody who's versatile offensively, who's a big four, stretch four, that can put the ball on the floor when needed and make passes, make plays. I'm with you on this. I think that'll come with time. He tries so, though. He oh, tries. Absolutely. He, yeah, he that's gives a, effort. That's a big step in the right direction. He tries. Yeah, for sure. Know? Like I said, I can see Stu just being here. Like a Udonis Sazman type of guy, if he's not playing, I could just kind of see his mentality just never leaving here and then being that kind of guy. But we'll see. Let's go. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it.
Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it It's for my city, and the team coming with me Headed for the championship, even if the road 